Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. I hope you're all well wherever you are and whatever you're up to. If you're watching my videos for the first time, I'm Lauren and I own my own fabric shop, which is where I am just now. It's called Guthrie and Ganny and it's in Birmingham in the UK and we also sell all of the fabrics online as well and we ship worldwide too. But today I'm really excited to bring you the first part of a new series of videos that I wanted to bring to my YouTube channel and onto the blog as well. And it is all gonna be focused on different types of fabric. So one of the really common questions that we get asked in the shop and also that I get asked a lot online as well is how do you choose what fabric goes with what pattern? and how do you work out what all the different fabrics are and what they're going to look like when you actually make them up into clothes. So what I want to do is just really focus on things from the point of view of a home dressmaker, somebody who has just sewn lovely things for themselves at home and using some of the amazing independent sewing patterns that you can get out there. Um, and yeah, each little video will focus on a different type. So the first one is going to be focused on cotton, but specifically woven cotton. Cotton can be made into loads of different types of fabric for different purposes too. So it might be curtains or upholstery things. Um, and then when you get into the realm of dressmaking for lots of different types of garment as well. So denim, for example, is made from cotton. Um, you can get stretchy jersey fabric that's made from cotton too. But I'm going to cover them separately in another post. Um, so I'm going to go through each type that I've got in a bit more detail but first of all before I do that I want to just cover some general points. When you are matching fabric to a pattern it's important to remember that you can use different types of fabric to make the same pattern and depending on the characteristics of that fabric that you choose will give a different outcome. To the garment so as well as considering what the fabric's actually made from so whether it is cotton or it's another fiber linen or rayon or viscose or whatever it whatever it might be that what's physically made it is also just generally the characteristics of it as well so is it thick is it thin is it floppy is it stiff does it move does it hold its shape it's getting to know all of those characteristics as well as the actual fiber content as well and the next thing is, is that fabrics can technically be described in their weight in grams per square meter. So if you were to cut out a square meter of a particular fabric, stick it on the scales to see how heavy it is, that would give you this unit of measurement, GSM, grams per square meter, and that number would tell you how heavy it was. Now, not all fabrics that we stock in the shop have that information available. Sometimes they do, but sometimes they don't. Um, so it's not consistently always there to, to sort of, you know, use as a way of measuring what the fabric's like. Um, but then also sometimes a number can just sort of seem a bit out of context it's hard to actually visualize it so that's why quite often fabrics get described in more subjective terms lightweight medium weight heavyweight canvas all of those sorts of things and they tend to be the types of words that we use to describe our own fabrics as well that we sell online and um, so Again, I'm going to go into the, into detail in that a little bit more so you can start to think, okay, if a fabric's described as lightweight, you know, what does that actually mean? Um, because that, that number isn't, isn't always available and it's not, it's, it, yeah, it's just hard to, to visualise what it actually means. <laughs> As you get used to just what all those terms are, it'll just make a little bit more sense. It'll be easier for you to start visualizing, okay, if I make this garment in a lightweight fabric, then it's gonna look something like this. And you can just start to sort of create these images in your head of, okay, this is sort of what I wanna make. And then you can put the pieces together to, to actually get what you want. So next up I want to cover why would you actually choose cotton to do dressmaking with and the first one is is that it's really easy to sew with. So if you are just starting out on your dressmaking journey it's a really good one to start with because it does sew up really well, it doesn't slip or move around too much, even the lighter weight ones are quite good at sort of staying where you want them to stay. It presses really well and takes a crease and that's really useful in dressmaking, it helps to give much more professional looking results and um, quite often more synthetic fibres don't don't press or don't crease as well with the iron and um, so you just get a nicer finish with the with the cotton it washes really well too so you can just bung it in your sewing machine with the rest of your clothes and um, some cotton fabrics will shrink more than others and um, it depends on how dense the weave is but I'll talk a little bit more about that in my next little section 
and it's cool to wear as well it's nice and breathable because it's a natural fiber and um, so it won't sort of feel sticky or sweaty and um, like some more synthetic fibers can so in terms of how cotton is actually sort of made and how it's woven so I'm sure you know and um, that the, the, the cotton comes from a cotton plant and the cellulose fibers that are within that cotton plant then get spun into threads um, and then those threads get woven into the fabric so quality can vary so you can get some really long fibers and very fine fibers and they tend to be produce a much higher quality cloth that is softer and it absorbs the 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 dye from the color from the dye a lot more it tends to be more durable the shorter fibers tend to bobble a little bit more so quality can vary quite a lot and then the way that the fabric is actually woven can be slightly different as well so the classic one is just like an over and under weave so just imagine like a like a basic grid and the fibers are going sort of in and out of each other in a really even grid like form or sometimes that as the fibers and the threads weave in and out they can get offset each time and each sort of new line as the fabric is woven and then that creates this kind of offset pattern that sort of looks like a diagonal on the fabric so you might have seen that on some sort of thicker, heavier fabrics um, are called drill or twill and um, you see that sort of texture on it and, and it just creates a different sort of feel and thickness and, and durability to the fabric. So now I'm going to go into detail into some terms that you might come across if you are looking at sewing patterns and it's suggesting different fabrics that you can use. Um, this list probably could go on and on and on but I've tried to kind of make it as relevant as I can for the home dressmaker. Um, but of course if, if you think I've missed anything out and you're not sure about anything please just ask me a question in the comments below. Um, so the first one I'm going to cover is cotton lawn and this is a great fabric to work with because it is nice and lightweight and it does have some movement to it but it's also quite stable so it's quite easy to work with. It is made up of very very fine thin threads of cotton and they tend to be woven quite densely as well so that produces a really nice soft sort of floaty fabric. You can get some cotton lawns that are described in a specific way and um, so a classic example of that is the tanna lawn which comes from Liberty Fabrics and that word tanna is just a word that Liberty have given to their specific cotton lawn just to make it stand out a little bit more so that people people recognize that term and that they then sort of start to associate it with being from Liberty and that it's much higher quality and um, but essentially it's it's still just cotton lawn it's just a, a sort of subsection of, of cotton lawn that, that signifies it's from Liberty. Um, McElroy cotton lawns, which some of you might have come across before or heard of too, um, they give the name Marley to their cotton lawn. And again, that's just another sort of prefix to the cotton lawn that is associated with the McElroy company. Um, and it's just to make it stand out a little bit more against all the other different types of cotton lawn that you can get out there. So cotton lawn is really good for various different types of dressmaking projects, tops, blouses, um, dresses are good as well. I've made lots of things in cotton lawn and I've got a few examples to show you as well. So this one is the simple top that is from my book, Learn to Sew with Lauren. And I did a hack on it to create these pin tucks down the front, which I've got a separate tutorial for on my blog as well. Um, and because it presses really well, it's really easy to put these type of pin tucks in that cotton lawn. Um, I've used, used it to make the Hunter tank from Jennifer Lauren patterns too which is just nice with the little tie it's nice that the fabric's quite lightweight I've also used it to make shirts so I've got the Deer and Doe Melolo shirt and then also the Closet Case Patterns Cali shirt as well these are both cotton lawns and um, so you can see that it that it works for a variety of different types of projects I've also made this over at Betty dress in a cotton lawn and because the skirt section of that dress is a full circle skirt there's quite a lot of fabric in it I didn't line it and um, but sometimes depending on the style of dress you may want to line a cotton lawn dress just because it is quite lightweight and sometimes they can be a little bit transparent and um, so if it was more straighter sort of shift dress then you might want to might want to line it just so you feel like you've got more coverage over your bum and your thighs and then other examples of just more simple projects that you could do are the Green Line Scout Tee and the Green Line Willow Tank as well. That's actually what I'm wearing just now. Um, so they're just really nice, simple ones. So if it's like a first 
dressmaking project you're looking for a cotton lawn in one of those patterns is, is a really good option to go for. So another common type of cotton that you might see listed on sewing patterns you might come across is cotton bastis or cotton voile. And this is a very, very lightweight type of cotton. Quite often it's sort of sheer or transparent. And I think this is really good for using and if you're gonna line something. So when I was mentioning before about lining a cotton lawn dress, this is something that you could use to do that. Um, you pro it tends to be quite plain, like it just comes in plain colors. And um, so you probably wouldn't want to make just the, just the garment out of it and um, but it is good for for backing stuff or, or lining it and um, the next one that I wanted to talk about is double gauze I absolutely love double gauze and it is basically like two layers of fabric that is very finely sewn together and the weave of this fabric tends to be a bit looser the threads are still quite fine that make up the, the fabric but because it's woven loosely it just has a much different texture to it sometimes it can almost feel a little bit spongy it tends to soften more as you wash it and it's almost like it molds to your body I've got quite a few tops that are in it and the more that I've worn and washed them it's like you're like you're breaking in a pair of shoes and this garment just sort of comes to kind of mold to the shape of your body it's just really cool to wear it really light and you can get really beautiful prints on it as well and um, I've used it to make the true bias Ogden cami and um, I've also used it to make another version of the simple top from my book and I added buttons down the back in this one and um, you can make dresses with it as well because it is quite lightweight and sometimes it can be a little bit sort of sheer you might feel like you want more coverage you may want to line it if you're making a dress but that would just sort of depend on the style of dress if the skirt section of the dress is quite full you maybe wouldn't want to and um, it can fray a bit more easily than the cotton lawn so it's good to use French seams with with that type of fabric or if you've got an overlocker you could use that too um, I've also got a green line Hadley top that I made in a double gauze and um, which I really love Another really good pattern choice is the Tilly and the Button Stevie top. It's a really simple one to make. So again, good if you're going for first project um, or you're still sort of beginning, that's another nice option to go for. The next one that I wanted to mention is cotton flannel or brushed cotton. And this fabric tends to be a little bit thicker and it's got a sort of fluffy feel to it really. And it's just because as it's been made, the, the fibers get sort of like agitated and kind of brushed a little bit and it sort of fluffs them up. So this fabric is really nice for pajama bottoms, for example, and you might sometimes see pajama bottoms in the shop that are made from that sort of fluffy type of cotton. Um, it's nice for shirts as well. Um, so I've suggested for this type of fabric that the green line patterns archer shirt is really good for that. And we don't have loads of brushed cotton in the shop. Um, I have got this one to show you, which is a sort of check, but it is quite a common one that you'll sort of see out there. So I wanted to mention it too. And the next one is cotton twill. And you might remember when I was mentioning about the weave of fabrics before, this is the one where the weave is offset a little bit. So it creates these kind of diagonal lines on the texture of the fabric. Quite often this type of fabric has spandex in it as well, which means that it's got a little bit of a stretch. So it's really good for skirts or trousers or quite a fitted dress like the Tilly and the Buttons Etta. Um, Cause it's so sculpted and fitted to the body. It's nice if the fabric it's got a little bit of give in it. I've got a pair of closet case pattern Sasha trousers and some of our Liberty stretch gabardine. So gabardine's another term that's really um, commonly used to describe this type of fabric too with that kind of diagonal weave. Um, so that's another example of a good thing that you can do with it. Um, the also the closet case patterns Kelly and Iraq does suggest that you can use um, twill too, twill or gabardine as well if you wanted more sort of fair weather style of jacket and um, so that is the cotton twill next up is medium weight cotton or quilting weight cotton and it has got more of a crossover between craft based projects like patchwork and quilting or bag making and dress making too and um, it does tend to hold its shape a lot more than say a cotton lawn so you have to choose the style of your garment wisely you don't want to choose anything that's like too full or too loose because it's going to feel a little bit like you're wearing a tent but if you are going to use quilting weight cotton to make garments art gallery is a really good example of a nice one that crosses over because in 
terms of quilting weight cotton, the art gallery ones are much lighter and they lend themselves much better to dressmaking projects. They're good for kids clothes as well, little kids dresses like the two stitches Zoe dress and then in terms of adult patterns the Nina Lee Carnaby dress is a good example for that, it's suggesting medium weight woven fabrics and you can see from the style of this that it's quite sort of plain and straight so it would be good for a fabric that's going to hold its structure a little bit more. I've also used a medium weight cotton to make the Merchant and Mills camber top as well and you can see from the style of this it's just sort of quite plain simple straight style it's got a bit of an a-line in it as well so that that thicker fabric just helps to hold the shape of that a little bit more and um, the next fabric that i've got to chat to you about is chambray and the name chambray actually refers to fabric where the threads that have made the fabric one direction of threads that are woven it is white um, and then the other direction of threads is another colour. Quite often it's blue so sometimes these type of fabrics can get put in with the denims but it's not strictly a denim. Um, I thought I'd mention it in here anyway because it sort of complements a lot of the other fabrics that I'm talking about. It's not always made from 100% cotton as well, um, so it might be made from linen, so it might be a mix of cotton and linen together, or it might be linen and rayon, um, so it may or, chambray may or may not end up popping up in some of my other videos that I do, but it's here anyway. The terms shot cotton or yarn dyed are also very similar used to describe this and from my experience in the fabrics that we've got in the shop that are described as this they tend to be a little bit heavier as well so more in that sort of medium weight category of fabrics and um, so they are really good for um, dresses or tunics or tops or skirts you can use them to make some lightweight trousers as well more sort of summery trousers I'm actually wearing it just now this is the Green Line Willow Tank um, and this is from our homespun, Robert Kaufman homespun chambray range that comes in a few different colours. There's a red and a charcoal and a darker blue one as well. And a really good example of a dress pattern that you could use with this fabric is the Deer and Doe Belladone dress. And because it's got that A-line shape in its skirt, it's good if you use something a little bit thicker with more body for this dress just so that it holds that A-line shape and can maintain the structure of the dress. The next group I wanted to mention are our waxed cotton canvases and that, that term canvas usually indicates a fabric that's going to be a bit thicker and heavier, something that's going to go through a lot of wear and tear. Um, the fabric tends to be very densely woven um, which does make it more durable and the range of wax cottons that we've got, the Millerine ones, have this sort of waxy finish on them which is which is really lovely. Um, I've used them to make the closet case patterns Kelly Anorak, the paper cut patterns Waver. Um, another good example is the Merchant and Mills Jack Tar bag. So anything that's going to go through yeah, a lot of wear and tear because this fabric is much denser, it's much thicker and yeah, just a lot more durable. The next fabric is corduroy and within corduroy there's lots of sort of variation that you can get and that usually comes down to the thickness of the little lines that are in the corduroy and a common way that it gets described is by the whale count. So the whale count of corduroy refers to in an inch measurement how many of those little lines are there. So the more lines that there are within an inch then the thinner that they'll be so the lighter weight the fabric will be. So the needle cord is really good for kids clothes and um, the, the two stitches dungaree pattern is a good example of that. Um, the thicker cords, and we've got a really lovely range of the Robert Kaufman corduroys, um, they're really good for the Tilly and the Buttons Cleo dungaree dress or the Tilly and the Buttons nest skirt or the jumbo ones with the really thick stripes, I've seen them used a lot recently for some sort of more baggy trousers, just the style that's going on. Sometimes they can have spandex in them as well, which will give them a little bit more of a stretch, then they're, they're good for trousers too, so that is the corduroy. The last one that I wanted to mention is cotton poplin. We don't actually have that much cotton poplin in the shop, but I'm, I'm mentioning it just because it you do see it quite a lot on the sewing patterns. It's more of a medium weight cotton, tends to hold its shape a little bit more, so good for dresses, skirts, really commonly used for shirts um, because this, this sort of structure of it is good for those features that are in shirts, the collars, the plackets, the button stand. Um, so I'm going to suggest that 
a shirt pattern like the classic, the Lise Linko all day shirt and then dresses that just need a little bit more sort of body or structure to them as well. So something like the sew over it rosy dress is a good, a good example of that too. So I hope that's helped to demystify some of the common cotton terms that you might come across. If you think I've missed any, just ask me below and I'll put a link to the blog post that's associated with this video in the description. So it's just kind of like notes of what I've said if you want to access it in a different format. But thanks so much for watching guys. I'm going to be back soon with another instalment from this series and that is going to be focusing on jersey or stretchy fabric. So if you've not subscribed already to my channel, just hit subscribe now so you don't miss out on that one. And I'll see you next time. Thanks guys. Bye.